Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at RIA taking a look at not quite the first, actually technically the second, but what the Canadians had hoped would have been the first, uh, issued revolver of the Northwest Mounted Police. And that, of course, is the name of the organization uh, originally founded that would later become the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the RCMP. Well, when they were first formed in the 1870s, uh, they were of course going to be a highly rural, highly independent group of kind of do-it-all law enforcement agents. They were going to be involved in tracking fugitives, uh, enforcing law, and they were going to be way out in the boonies. So of course these guys needed some weapons. Although it's interesting that they would really kind of pride themselves on how little they were able to use them, forced to use them. Uh, at any rate, when they first got started in 1873, they were looking at what were basically issue weapons for the British at the time. Um, you know, easily available through the British military supply chain. And so they decided to pick up uh, Adams revolvers and Snyder carbines. Now, uh, <laughs> in March of 1874, they formally requisitioned 330 Adams revolvers, uh, cool, good, center fire, modern Adams revolvers, uh, through the militia. The order was actually placed in England, and it took about four months before their revolvers finally arrived. And when they did, it was July of 1874, and they cracked open the, the crates and found converted Adams Mark I revolvers. This was an 1854 pattern gun. Uh, that had originally been a, a cap and ball percussion revolver that had been converted to use center, new center fire cartridges. Uh, but it meant they were only five shot guns instead of six, and these were really beat up, worn out guns. These were basically leftover British military surplus. And the, the Mounties issued them out, but boy, they just did not like them. They were very unhappy. Reports from the field were like, these things are worse than useless. Uh, you know, timing's all messed up, they're not reliable, just they're they're terrible guns. Especially like you expect us to go, you know, off into the wild by ourselves without backup, and you're gonna give us a thoroughly unreliable gun for probably, like this is not good. So uh, they complained in uh, October of 1874, uh, they the British military issued them replacement guns. Like, okay, our bad, maybe there's misunderstanding. Uh, and they sent out a new batch of Adams revolvers. And when those arrived, uh, 326 of them, they asked for 330 and four managed to get stolen in transit. But when those arrived, those were the good stuff. Those were Adams Mark III revolvers. And that is what we have an example of here. This is actually one of the Canadian uh, Northwest Mounted Police issued Adams Mark III's. So let's take a closer look at exactly what the Mounties started off uh, their law enforcement career with. The original Adams revolvers were of course black powder percussion revolvers, as the Canadians had discovered. This was a design by one Robert Adams uh, in Great Britain that on paper technologically gave the Colt revolvers of the time, the early 1850s, a serious run for their money. This was a larger caliber gun than Colt offered. Um, it was a 442 caliber, uh, five shot revolver with a double action trigger mechanism, um, the first successful double action revolver marketed, uh, and also um, offered a solid frame, substantially stronger than that of the Colts at the time. Now, uh, these would be converted into center fire <laughs> as the Canadians developed, uh, discovered. And then uh, Adam's brother John Adams actually developed a two-part frame that simplified manufacture and would be the base for the uh, made from scratch uh, center fire uh, cartridge versions. So there was a Mark I, a Mark II, and a Mark III. What we have here is the Mark III. This was uh, developed in 1872. You'll see 1878 dates associated with them. That's when the British started issuing uh, the Mark III Adams to the cavalry, uh, but it's not when the gun was actually developed. We have a bunch of markings on here to take a look at. Uh, this is uh, British military proof, and it's stamped a Mark III gun. Back here on the frame we have a serial number on the trigger, which we'll get to the main serial number in a minute. We have the original date of uh, military acceptance, which was March of 1874. So these guns uh, were in fact surplus uh, from British mil- these were in, in stock with the British military when they were sh shipped uh, to Canada. 
Um, they weren't bought new from the factory specifically for the Mounties. We have another broad arrow acceptance mark here, and then it has a second one stamped tip to tip with it, and that indicates that the gun was sold out of service into private possession. Uh, that double broad arrow is a, a standard marking for British Imperial, you know, British Commonwealth and Empire guns that were sold privately out of service. On the right side we have Adam's patent, of course, a trademark from the manufacturer. We have the serial number, which is 6912 on both the uh, cylinder and the frame down here. And then we have a couple of markings that were specifically added by the Canadians, or by a private gunsmith contracted to do so, upon receipt of the guns. So they're marked CMP, which probably stands for Canada Mounted Police. Uh, and then they would have had a three-digit Canadian serial number. And when the guns were sold onto the private market, that serial number was obliterated like so. Functionally, what we have is sort of one of the early style of center fire revolvers with a fixed cylinder, and it has a tip over, a swing over ejector rod uh, that you, you have to go through and manually eject each cartridge. Um, there is no um, Abadie style disconnector, so if you pull the trigger with the loading gate open, it's still going to move the hammer. In order to remove the cylinder, you take the uh, ejector rod off to the side, and then there's actually a little spring-loaded button right here, and that is a detent that holds the cylinder axis pin in place. So, it's a little tricky to do with the rod in there, but you push the button down and you can pull this axis pin all the way out, and then the cylinder comes out. It's serialized on the front as well as the side, somewhere around here. There it is. It's interesting to note that uh, the cylinder on this is much longer than the 450 cartridge that it was designed to use. You can see the shoulder there where the, the brass ends, and it's actually less than halfway down the cylinder. Uh, 450 Boxer, aka 450 Atoms, uh, was a very short cartridge. I suspect that the frame was kept the same length to simplify tooling, uh, from the black powder versions, although don't quote me on that um, 100%. The cartridge, by the way, uh, used to, fired a 225 grain bullet at about 650 feet per second. So uh, not, the, not the heftiest cartridge, but not a pipsqueak by any means. And by the way, I should point out here, I kind of overdid this. There is a detent, or a, a cutout right here, so that this is actually supposed to be a captive cylinder axis pin. So if I, if you let go of the button when you're pulling this out, it will come to there, and then retain in place so that you don't lose it. And then when you push it back in, it locks in the installed position. It's also worth pointing out that this is one of those uh, revolver designs where when the trigger's forward and the hammer's down, the cylinder is not locked up. So this does not indicate an extremely worn gun. Put that back. Um, when the gun is actually fired, when the hammer falls with the trigger pulled, that's when the cylinder is actually locked in place. And this one's got a little bit of play to it, but uh, pretty good for a revolver that's 150 years old. Also note that the sight picture is remarkably good uh, for its age. That's, that's not bad. It's got a fairly thin front blade, but a nice big rear notch. Um, and you could definitely shoot this, I would say, better than a uh, percussion Colt from a, a decade earlier. The Mark III Adams here was a much more popular gun with the officers of the Northwest Mounted Police. They liked them. That didn't mean that was exclusively what they were using. It was still not particularly uncommon uh, to have officers, especially uh, senior officers, with their own personal uh, revolvers. There were Colt revolvers that some people really liked, as well as a variety of other guns out there. And the same goes for carbines. Um, it was a, a more sort of independent force, uh, really just frankly because of its sort of frontier nature. But uh, they did really like the Adams Mark III. In 1880 they decided to try and, add and buy some more of them. Uh, but by that time, the British had replaced the Adams in military service with the Enfield revolvers. And so when the Mounties got their second, you know, their additional batch of guns that they'd ordered, once again it wasn't actually what they'd requested. This time they got Enfield, I believe it was Mark II 
either Mark I or Mark II Enfield revolvers as their their next revolver. So uh, really only a pretty brief time period that these were in use. Um, the ones that were initially bought certainly would continue to stay in service for a while, um, but as far as being like the primary most up-to-date, most modern revolver for the Mounties, we're talking five years or so. Um, so, uh, And there were only 326 of them that actually got issued, so they're a pretty darn scarce revolver. Hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at this one. Thanks for watching.